is International Performance Group and headquarters of Nongrata is in Estonia, in the city called Parno. It was founded in 1998 and um, in this kind of early capitalistic society, what was here after Soviet Union broke down, all kind of humanitarian education, art, it was all considered as unrelevant in the society. They closed down all the art schools, artists, were even very ashamed to call themselves artists, so they called themselves designers or something like that, but was kind of connected to the commercial world. All the art events were connected to some kind of presentations of the companies who moved into East Europe, all tobacco companies, car companies, everything. Performance field was mostly connected to the commercial performances when there was like presentations of the Paul Mal new cigarette brand and performance artists were ordered to make performance and afterwards they left and then people continued to drink champagne and stuff. And so we decided 1997 that we want to change the system and this really can't continue like that. So we, we founded Academia Non Grata, art school not wanted. And um, it was conceptual university we had 40 students at the start. They were all leftovers from another art schools or dropouts. We moved to completely empty, empty town. There was no art world, no really art scene even. Parano Kurat city on the west coast of Estonia. None of these people were actually from here. So we collected together the most um, radical intellectuals, writers, philosophers, artists, everybody who were concerned about the development of the society and started this art school here. So in three, four, in three, four years, we were in totally underground, then it moved to university level. We joined together with the Estonian Art Academy uh, where their performance and fine art department for a while. And then since Estonian Art Academy took our educational program over them, our grassroots activity was kind of done. So we left our students to the Estonian Art Academy and took off to the world. So nowadays, Longrata has more than 1,000 students, 8,000 students and members all over the world. We constantly traveling 10 months per year, a couple months in Asia, a couple months in North and South America, a couple months in Europe, and so on. So um, our main characteristics are the ignorance of two local art world, then um, anonymity in group work, and yeah, we don't really connect with mass media. So all Nongrata performance is happening kind of in the places where art work usually doesn't work, in the streets, on the shopping centers, in the abandoned houses, but then also we attack into the galleries and, um, and museums to kind of uh, context specific actions where they, they, when art will have the big celebrations or openings or stuff, then they can always wait for no grata attack. Yeah, we, it started with this Academia no grata. So uh, it is during the first year of the existence of the art school, these uh, teacher, teachers and students, they put together this kind of group. So collectively, we kind of uh, wrote down the philosophy and ideological side of the work. So it was kind of collective input into the theory and also practice. So it's like in this Nongrata school, everybody performed like 
couple times per day. So it was like massive, massive kind of yeah, performative actions. And so it's like um, most active part of the students and teachers. But in the school, this hierarchy between students and teachers, it was very narrow. So uh, most of the, the exercises, but teachers gave to students, they also had to do it themselves at the same time. So you wouldn't really give just exercise to somebody to fill up. You had to, if you put somebody to write essay, you have to write better essay yourself or you're, you are not successful teacher. So you have to be in the best shape in every fucking moment. Also performance, when, you, when we made performances, then also the same teacher who gave professor who gave the performance exercise, he had to finish the lesson with his own uh, performance on the same team. And mostly they were also kind of right. We didn't break too many. We had some factories, abandoned factories in the city, but we used as our performance space. But most of the actions just opened, happened like in the real situations, interactive situations with city people, with like, yeah, with museums, with town governments. And all our this academia on Onkrata was all kind of our educational performance. So these lot of these actions, like meeting the cultural ministry representatives, like meeting the president and, and all kind of official town cover municipal systems, we kind of made all performance wise. So it was very hard to understand. Is it like real meeting or is it just performance? So we had connections with this Finnish art academy first and, and Latvian art academy. So first our trips, 1999 in springtime uh, were in Finland and then in Riga. And then there was Exit Festival 2001. Yeah, when what Roy Vara is organized, it was the biggest festival by then, like some 500 artists from 100 countries or something. And, uh, that we got a lot of like international contacts in every time we went. So we, in this exit festival, for example, we made like 11 people. We were downstairs of the cable factory. So the peak festival, the world biggest performance festival was up on the first floor and big, huge cable hall. And we were downstairs in the cellar under that and made like nonstop performance for two weeks. So these people were performing there the official program, these speeches, all that, and all the time they hear us performing downstairs, but nobody really saw us. So this was the very typical way how we connected, were connected to the art world. Then we got a lot of these kind of invitations to participate in another festivals or just make our own events. And so then we start to travel and then step by step, Kind of, yeah, it went like over this school, went over to this touring group. There is no really membership card. So it's people, it's people sharing our, these three principles. And if they, if they um, perform with us, or, then they are members. They, so they can be members just this very short, limited time when this performance happening. But they still are. So it's like almost to everybody possibility to be part of this process. And then they this can decide themselves. Are they real non grata members? Do they continue? Or was it just one time experience? But there have been a lot of them on the road. Academia non grata, this, uh, this was the first art school in Estonia after Soviet time. Uh, which was purely fine art school because all these big, huge art schools, they were part handcraft, mostly handcraft, and there was little fine art department. So we wanted to get rid of this handcraft part. That way we changed it a lot. And of course, like it's always it reminds to artists all over the world, what is the real value of art? That art is not just entertainment, art is illustration, that art is philosophy, art is very powerful tool to change the world. And all the members we meet when we travel around, we meet like every time, like thousands and thousands of people. 
some events they have like yeah it's like big like football they will sometimes it's just underground punk garage number but um all these people they always get something un unexpected so it's changing the world and especially now when this corona have took over the world and we haven't able to travel a lot one year no so worldwide just small trips so yeah all the world is missing kind of um, us like that way that they got so used to it that now it's like really tragic point in their lives that uh, Nongrata doesn't come to their city and it misses. But uh, no, we have, we actually, we have manifested already 10 years in our performances, the same things what happened, this revolution in America, Black Lives Matter, all these, our force majeure performances, performances where they talk in how the human being is the force majeure. Everything that happened in America, it's that this revolutionary, these cars on the streets, the people on the cars, and like all this. We, we kind of uh, talk 10 years about this, that this is going to happen. And also in our performances, we always talk that we, when you burn your mother language, when you talk your national food, your um, education, your police force, all social systems that who are you when you take it everything away what is built by the society that who are really you so this all happened now in corona time when people really like had to change their uh, way of thinking and way of understanding the world and their habits and really this existential questions about their everyday existence came on board so of course we knew that this is coming but i never thought that it's coming so soon and all together so so it's like people quite often ask that why you are so violent why you are so in your visual language why you are so brutal but actually now like everybody have seen that yeah there was nothing really over exaggerated that way that it all happened we believe that art has to be a couple steps ahead of society, that art is not just illustrating uh, the social problems of the society. A lot of art nowadays is just like people, artists read, especially performance art, that they read some act, um, actual problems from the newspaper and then they illustrate it with the performance. So we were kind of like opposite. Our sites have and context specific performances, it's mostly we just search the local environment and then, then presented our own view what's going to come. So it, it was never like really, we, we always have refused to explain our performance beforehand. And later we can change that, our interpretation to the audience interpretation, but we never try to make it easy to understand that, that well, this is kind of trigger to make people think and feel and understand. But of course, yeah, we have changed also during society has changed. This early, early capitalistic society that was in 1990s, in the middle of 1990s, have changed now to typical, this Nordic, um, European kind of, yeah. Um, slow, safe, capitalistic country. So, of course, our ideas have changed a lot. When we started, we made a lot of these kind of naked performances, brutal, like a lot of pain and suffering, kind of, and uh, really real. Now, nowadays, it's, yeah, turned more to this kind of ironical parodies about showing the mirror of the society a little bit more funny way and um, maybe using much more of um, symbols from the environment world to make the connection. And, um, and of course, people have changed. Now it's completely different generation came up with us, our youngest members, usually on the tours, they were really very different ages, very different uh, yeah, races, very different uh, backgrounds, 
like cultural background, social backgrounds. Our youngest member was one year old uh, Ineta, uh, Japanese um, puto dancer, the kid who was also participating in that was one year old and the oldest one was you know, on the same troop, 99 years old, Sorbonne University professor Wang Linusnet. So all the century was covered age-wise. Now we were running performance festival, diverse universe. So it was kind of diverse always like, yeah, it's like, I don't know, I, one of our rectors put this name no, you have to have some name, like kind of for the festival. So, so this seemed to be kind of good one because like, um, yeah, performance festival on the wheel. So we had like, sometimes we had, we started with very big, like 50 people in the bus, everybody, international crowd in there. And then whenever somebody saw the stop where they wanted to make performance, they stopped the bus and made the performance. And in these times, there was also this, border controls and all that. So in every border, we had like huge performance, 50 people out of the car. We were very often arrested for <laughs> in the border. And it was pretty big mess always. And so, um, and then when we traveled with our own band, uh, yeah, it's like you have to put this kind of together, the same good, like good, they have to be good artists. In the same time, they have to be good drivers. Some people have to be very good in social skills. Even they are not very good performance, they need like, they need to be there to keep up the atmosphere because like most of the people, you now for the artists usually who have really big egos, it's really hard to be a couple of weeks in the same van with somebody else who is also an artist. So, but it worked like that, that I organize everything from for the, Artists. So artists just have to sit in the car and go to one place for another and just concentrate on art making. They don't have to take care of food, about finances, about gasoline, about transport, even performance partners, everything is taken care of. So whatever they need, it's that. So uh, it's total creative freedom in the van. So there is no ideas what are censored, everything is possible, just go and do it. And, all the people can use another artist as their tools or performance partners in the performances. So theoretically, it's like, yeah, going very well. And somehow when I have been there, I have realized it later. I didn't even pay any attention. I thought it's pretty normal skill, but now later when we, there have been more theoretical works about our group, then I realized that nobody else really doesn't do that. And then these kind of trips for so long and, and there is always this that they, they, these tours will be cut in certain point because people start to fight. And in our tours, yeah, there have been also that. And I leave the room for, I go to buy a beer once sometimes that somebody goes, oh, look, come with me and I go with them and they come back and the, the people have destroyed totally all the apartment They've been fighting like kind of in 15 minutes, total mad madness have happened. And this is the thing that yeah, this big ego somehow you can explain them why it's all so important when you theoretically kind of and practically kind of show them that it's all very good for us, that we are able to work it with each other, that collective collectivity has some power, we can really change the world. And then it works. But there are many take this part away, then yeah, this, when this ego starts up, then it's like everybody just wants to run their own performance idea. They don't really want to work together. They don't want to hear another opinions. So um, somehow we have managed very well with that. And, and people somehow, even these artists who are totally not capable to work with the others in their everyday life, in studio life, they hate their studio partners and our studio mates and stuff, but um, somehow in tours, they really like, maybe they even hate it where when it's happening, but after the tour is over, they call me already in two weeks and say, when is the next tour? I want to come. This was so great. Like, yeah. So it's also, I have run also a lot of these kind of survival courses. No, not even last years now, but earlier, and 
when I take people to total wilderness without any food and clothes or phones or keys and every, take everything away from them and we spend there a couple weeks. Yeah, they, they all people, they start to hate you there on, the, on this survival course. But, but after the course, then they become your best friends. So when you put people in extreme kind of situations, not even like physically, no? of course, it's a little bit uncomfortable to be in the same car with so many people in the same time and sleep together and, and all this stuff and uh, these personal relationships. But this creative pleasure and this creative environment, what is so powerful, it gives them to the artist this kind of um, experience, what they have never experienced before. So day job is like um, something what you make for just for money. So yeah, and we have made it. So I, I really think yeah, that human resource of, is the most valuable resource that human being has. So uh, this is it's total madness to sell it away for pocket money to some bar owner or factory owner. So. Um, People should really evaluate their time and only make uh, the work what they really want to do, what they just what they are what what they also are able to do without getting any payment for that. So it's like, um, of course, it's not that don't work at all, but it's more that you just have to make your own personal choices. Just cho make this kind of work what uh, is good for your development as a human being, as a member of society, whatever skills you think is useful to have there and that you always can escape your comfort zone that way that you don't take the easy money from somewhere just because it's money. So money doesn't have really value. Money, money is just a tool and not, and we, we use a lot of, um, different ways to finance our tour. I think maybe some members also take some day jobs when they collect money to come to tour or something, but you don't really need money in the tour. So that is everything taken care of. You don't have to buy it in something in every gasoline station. Food, you have food and materials and company, all that. So it's just more like habit that you have to have money. Now, most of people, they don't need this money, actually. Like people go to study, then they go to work, then they can't do both properly. So they try to take and waste, wasting their time in university because they are not able, because of their work, they are not able to take the study program totally. And then they just going to be bad professionals and then they all their life, they kind of suffering that without real profession. And not, and that way, our, we financed it the same way. We have made it so long. So now most of the places where we perform, they pay for our expenses and big places also pay a lot of fee and stuff and small places get it for free, mostly on the road. Yeah, all the places doesn't pay equally. So it's very, understandable that some Tate Museum can't, can pay like 100 times more than some punk garage. Huh? And the, most of the, the punk communities or, or their communes, yeah, they, you, you perform that, then they drink your beers and yeah, then they eat your food. So yeah, it's like, um, so you have to get the finances from another places. But we are quite well organized that way that we are organizing ourselves, several festivals. Our performance activities are not very supported by the government or anything, but we organize a lot of this kind of, through our educational experience, this kind of workshops and um, festivals, writing applications. So it's like whatever way to get this money out of the society is good since we're making it 24 hours per day and seven days in a week. So non-constantly we make art. So I think all the cultural money, what is there available, it belongs to us. 
for example, no, we we were on the way to Paris to perform, and that then there was big um, anti-globalization meeting in 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 Copenhagen. So they arrested us. The military came there also, and they arrested us and kept us in the prison too long. So I sued the Danish government. And then the non grata book, the red non grata book is given out with this money. So thank God save the queen. Yeah, we kind of, uh, you can sue the governments to get money. We don't use it too often, but yeah, oh, these huge cases are kind of boring. But they were pretty brutal there, so they deserved to be a little financial punishment from the artists. We have always, no, kind of, it's kind of physical Facebook or not that way. We have keeping this network all the time living. It's also kind of virtual when you organize stuff, but it's like very important that we also physically meet. So the artists, I think, are clever that way, or they are can really like work in different situations. So I don't think so. My life is not less creative because of COVID. So it's like I have tons of things to do and every day what I want to do and I'm still doing it. They are a little bit changed, maybe a little bit more locally now. We have worked here kind of more in Estonia and less abroad, but but these workshops still existing. I don't think so. It's going anywhere. We haven't lost anything because of that. The, the performing is not the only way to make art or whatever. So it's kind of a, yeah, you just find another solutions to be creative. Of course, it's fun to perform and it's very important, but, but um, Nowadays, thanks to social media and stuff, you are connected with people anyway, and you make your art. You know, all our festivals still happening, not really this so long travels, but um, a lot of art is still, even last year and this year gonna come, a lot of our members here, so, and a lot of different artists. So it's like, um, it's the same creative ex experimental space, but we are living it. So how you feel it, it's not very important. So we don't have this kind of um, ready-made system that it's, it's like the most um, intellectual skill that human being has is to find new alternative solutions. And this is also why art is important in society that it ha has possibility to show to the society alternative ways to run the world, the society, it can show completely alternative ways to live and work. And that's because art is important. Art is just a tool, it's communication, it's uh, getting attention to your ideas. So, um, and that way, I think it, it's working still now. Of course, I don't know when it's like COVID gonna be like 10 years, yeah, maybe then I'm gonna be dead and then yeah, somebody else have to find out another way, but but otherwise, as, as long we live in, we're doing it, and it's all great experimental experience every day. Remember, Nongrata is forever.